You're listening to the Download Youth Ministry Podcast. Three, two, one. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Download Youth Ministry Podcast. Yeah. This is Doug Fields with Hi, my Doug. co-host Josh. Well, hello there. Uh, Griffin and the Queen, Katie Katrina Edwards, <laughs> episode 334, yes. and senior pastor, former yeah. youth pastor, former Supertones, um, beginning former... to look a little bit like David Letterman, yes. Jason <laughs> Carson. Yeah. Look at hello, you. Hello, Bushy hello. beard, strong gray everywhere. It's, it's, it's coming in. Silver Fox. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a while since we've been together. I feel a little yeah. bit stressed because we are, um, we're on a little tight timeline line to record uh, two shows with Jason before he goes off to band rehearsals? Not rehearsals, chapel auditions. Chapel so, auditions. So I work with this school that my kids go to for the junior high chapel band, which your son was in how yeah. many years ago? 10? He's 26, so... Probably 10, oh, oh 12, so 14. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, we have about three straight hours of kids coming in trying out with singing and drums and bass and guitars and, and it's kind of it, fun it is fun it seems like That's it would awesome. be painful well this one's going to be tough i was just saying like i i have i'm aware of six drummers that are going to be trying out. how many wow. do you need no more than two like oh, it would be bad and apparently four of them are really good i've uh -oh. I talked to lots of people and there's politics involved in like three of them that are wow. connected to like politics wow. at a Christian school. That's oh, so hard weird. to believe! believe it? Wow, so politics in ministry. So I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have. So any what books. are you going to do? I don't know. We'll see. You should say the best one is going to be the. You're going to win the audition. Uh, I know. Well, who knows better than you, drummer of the Supertones? Former, I mean. former, former, drummer former, of the former Supertones. Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> Technically, you're still the current drummer. It's just the Supertones yeah, are former. Nobody replaced you. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Well, and let's catch up a little, Katie. You just had a daughter graduate high school. I know. Wow. Oh my. It's really gosh. weird. I remember when you graduated high school. Oh. Those were the days, weren't Those they? Those were the days. Also <laughs> 10 or 14 years ago. Yes, exactly. It was yeah. so, yeah, it's so cool. It's, I, Ron and I, my husband and I were talking last night and just, just how much fun it is, like being in this phase and stage with her. I think so, so many people early on when you're a parent to talk about dreading teenage years and things yeah. like that, but it just feels like it's getting sweeter and more fun and you know, I don't know. She's 18, and yeah, it's just really cool. So we're she's excited great, for her. Yeah, she's a great. We're young excited woman. for her, and what's next? And she's excited, and awesome. I don't know. It's just been this senior year has just been the sweetest. She's just really thriving. So and fun. Are you ready cool. to let her go? Travel across the world and be yeah. like free like that. That feels yeah, intimidating no. to me. I mean, I want her to be next to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. I want to carry her around in my pocket. But I, you know, it is also so fun her going out and having her own relationships yeah. and friendships and yeah. new adventures. What's is, she gonna do? She's she's actually sticking close to home. She's going to junior college next year okay. and she's really excited about it. And Great. Um, she's got some opportunities potentially to study abroad and to do a couple things. So uh -huh. I don't know. We're really excited she's for her. She's dynamite. That is great. Yeah. You know, awesome. you said get sweeter. It is stage is sweeter. And I think I've told you guys the story of Tick Long, who used to be the president of Youth Specialties, who's actually coming here tomorrow to help us brainstorm the new yeah. the new YS. Whoa. National Youth Work. Um, anyway, him and I used to travel a lot together many years ago, and his kids were 10 years older than mine. And so when they were little... He had teenagers, and he just kept saying, oh, it just keeps getting better and better. And I'm like, how can he get better than a four-year-old? Like, right. how can he get better than a six-year-olds are so cute? As a two-year-old, you're like, it has to get better. <laughs> but four and six, they're sweet. <laughs> right, totally. yeah. yeah. But he just kept saying it keeps getting better and better That's and better. Awesome. And then I just, you know, we grew into that and like, yep. Yep, and now we're yeah. we're expecting our first grandchild any day, any day, any day. and yeah. it just keeps getting better and better. It's every yeah. every season is sweet. Well, yeah. I think just watching them, you know, she she loves Jesus, and that's cool. Yep. And you know, you're just like, wow, it's happening. Yes, you yep. know, you, a mm -hmm. little bit of that, a little bit of like, okay, like she's making it. She loves Jesus. This is cool. But watching her like her own relationship with God like really begin to explode and. Yeah. She's serving and leading, and it's just, I don't know, it's awesome. It's really Well, awesome. and part of the reason it's a little surprising is because <clears throat> our kids grew up in ministry. Kind of, And yes, you watch and other scared. ministry kids, and you're like, oh, <laughs> gosh, are they going to yeah. be that typical, right. you yes. know, Please PK? No. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love and it. she oh. loves the church and loves you know all, you know the her people in the church, and so it's yeah. it's just everything that I think we 
just seeing God's faithfulness and what we've prayed for. And now it's like, cool, you're, we feel ready to send you out. We yeah. Feel you ready. guys have really embraced the community, so the village aspect though. Like you have family, but friends and coworkers and people, the neighborhood, like you do a really intentional job of surrounding your kids and family with a great community. Well, we need people to help us drive carpool. So it's like, <laughs> we would but, not survive without I mean, that. Seriously, I've, I've, yeah. I've watched a lot of people parent, and you guys yeah, are really cool. good at that. Yeah. Thank Exceptional. You. Yeah. Well, she feels really loved by, by people. So a that's lot of very people, cool. too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool. fun. So, Katie, let's turn this into a little bit of a parenting for uh, parenting podcast. Okay. Because I would say the same thing. You know, when people talk yeah. about my kids, I'm like, we surrounded them with. Well, you're who modeled it for me. I mean, honestly, like when we were new in ministry, you know, you and Kurt Johnston, I mean, watching you guys be in rhythm with ministry and family and your yeses and nos and bringing people into the good moments and the hard moments. I mean, I feel like we got to have a front row seat to that. And so, gosh, so much of how Mm. you and Kathy did it shaped Ron and I, and so much of how Kurt and Rachel did it shaped us too, like just watching the rhythm of family and kids and ministry all together in one big pot, so. Do you you think Doug did a better job or Kurt as a a parent? (laughs) Well, (laughs) they did it different, they did it different. That was kind of the cool thing is I think you guys had the same philosophy, but you guys had different approaches, and which was cool. So I feel like we got really cool people just modeling and mentoring us as parents in that, which I'm grateful for, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Josh and I were just talking about parenting stuff the other day because yeah. Josh has moved into a bigger house. Yep. And is that okay to say? Yeah. That oh, yeah. you wanted right. you're wanting to have more people in your house to be around your kids. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My, for the first time, my wife, we were talking about a friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, that is becoming a citizen, a U.S. citizen. I was talking about how cool it was, and we brought some firework Oreos into the to the our friend and congratulated him. And Ange said for the first time, she's like, well, why don't we do like a party for him at our house? And I was like, this is awesome. I've waited for this moment. I just love that community and friends. And like, I want great people to interact and rub shoulders with my kids and Mm -hmm. different perspectives. And in this case, different nationalities, even to be, I mean, becoming a U.S. citizen, but just fun to have like different perspectives on life and faith and stories. I want my kids to be the product of a great group of men and women who love them. But don't you think when they're youth workers as opposed to just friends. Oh, yeah. Just say when they're youth workers. So we had volunteers in our house all the time. Mm -hmm. And like I, we were were actually in the pool yesterday talking about people skills with little kids. And I was telling my, I had my girls over. So Cody wasn't there, but my girls and I was saying, you guys had tremendous people skills at little ages. Really early. Because youth workers were over and you were talking to them and youth workers pay attention to kids right so josh and i do crossfit he brings his son you know Jaden, yeah. on monday yeah. wednesday and friday to go to the kids class but afterwards i'm always goofing on Jaden, always because that's what you do with right with your well and even even chip the guy who does customer service for Donald youth mystery many of our longtime viewers would know chip um chip runs a catering business on the side and so he's hired my oldest son to like make desserts and decorate, cook, whatever they're, I don't even know what they do. But here's what I know. <laughs> My son's getting paid, so he's learning a little bit of work ethic. I love all that. But he's hanging out with a youth worker. He's hanging yeah. out with Chip. And Chip is, he's a talker and he's also a listener. And I love that. He is going to draw out some great stuff out of my oldest that I want him in that job. Even if he wasn't, I should be paying Chip, actually. You should. That, that'll that'll never dude. happen though with Josh. Not that'll a chance. Never happen. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> that was gonna freeze over. <laughs> was that an easy setup for you? You guys are welcome. You're welcome. Well, that. anyway, a spontaneous moment on the it's show. Fun. Congratulations, but parenting so and youth it's ministry so and the journey, okay. and it's it gets better. It gets better. Uh, our daughter got married uh, a few weeks ago, yeah. and we were talking about something. And she said at her rehearsal dinner, she we were talking about growing up in the church and she mm. said i wouldn't change it for anything uh, oh god that's amazing yeah. literally the dream that of is. every youth worker is to go please help my kid to love this place when when, when yeah. they grow yeah up. but parents have to make the right decisions yeah. they have to be married to their family and their their spouse totally. and not, not be married to the church yeah. and mm-hmm. it's kind of yeah. fun even looking around the life stages of this room kids are out of the house one kid out of the house and a couple more on their way. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple in high school, three next year, two years from now, which is crazy. First one going, one going, first one going into high school yes. right here and some youngers. Like it's yeah. kind of fun. We have a bunch of different life stages yeah. Yeah. represented in the show. That's cool. 
Yeah. yeah. And what a big moment for you, Katie. Congrats. So we can really say we're a diverse show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Diversity. We don't lead with our diversity. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. We so, have a drummer. So and a senior pastor. <laughs> that's right. I'd like to take a minute to brag on Katie. Can I? Yes. Okay. So oh, this is the Katie so show. Katie, almost, this, I've been yeah. waiting about a mother. month to say this right now. I went to so my my second daughter okay. is uh, Lucy. She's gonna go into junior high next year. So she went to the new JHN. So one graduated. The preview. One just graduated. Mm-hmm. She cried. She said Katie meant I the world her. to me. So she's moving on to HSM. I love her. And now. Um, my new one is coming in, Lucy. And so they had parents come. They have this amazing night. I went to the one for Howie, too. But this was like, Katie, give a message. So this is Saturday night. Yeah. Because think, let's remind night. our listeners right. okay. that you are a pastor at yeah. a startup church yep. on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And you have your kids going to yeah. the church down the street. To Katie's youth group. Yeah. And so, That's awesome. So we come in there. And I'm telling you, your leaders were on point. They were greeting all over the place, connecting kids making them just feel welcome, the games, the announcements. I, I think you had Matt and Jessica doing announcements. They just were incredible. Uh, and then Katie gave the message. And If her, the announcements are incredible, you know it's a good night. Uh, That's it. No, but, but Katie's message was so spot on. She was funny, she was engaging, she brought every, like you, you do you do this? Do you guys look around the room to see like how kids are listening to a, a oh, speaker? Sure, of course. Like yeah. it was like, they were glued to her. Oh. And it was just That's to awesome. have a room full of junior hires glued to a speaker is pretty rare. And she was just, I forget yeah. what it was now, but there was there was bombs she was dropping that was like exactly what a sixth or seventh or eighth grader would want to listen to the world that they were in. And I just thought, oh my gosh, do I take for granted all the time like relatability mm-hmm. and stories that connect? And like we think we plan those into our sermons, but... It was so intentional from her, oh, and then great. and then at the end, and then she cool. was able to not just tell funny stories, but just she gave a powerful message on the Word of God and just how it can relate to that and being strong and courageous. And it was just Katie, you're my hero, oh, and she's just like my kids. Awesome. How good is that? Yeah. It's great. What a so, great show, everybody. That was awesome. Home run, I love Katie it. Edwards. <laughs> Yeah, Thank Katie, you. do you want to do your endorsement. acceptance speech at all? Seriously, let's hey, have questions just for Katie, and we'll yeah. just listen. What we should do is we well, should also say that we're part of a podcast network that yes. has a primary sponsor called Orange. Mm. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Orange Conference That's coming good. this That's April. A nice jingle, it was wasn't? a good jingle. Orange yeah. tour this fall. She copyright. If I had oh, a, okay. uh, if I had a, if you know, had a, if I had a keyboard. keyboard. Yeah. What yeah. if the what if you we or put a keyboard in front of you? A guitar. A guitar. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that would be great. too. It'd be perfect. And that yeah. was yes. just my job, sound effects. Oh. Um, but we love our, our orange peeps. And if you would like, um, we are the only ones that can provide the greatest discount. Uh, top on, secret discount code to on, yeah. Yeah. Email the in, orange right? curriculum. Yeah, you yeah. have to send an email to podcast at Download Youth Ministry and just ask for, I want the best want, uh, yeah. XP3 middle school or Exclusive high school curriculum. Code, top secret. It will not be posted on social media. It's only if you listen to the show and write in. It's 15% off the lowest you will ever find. Yeah. Wow. Even, even what they advertise is the lowest. Why wouldn't you do this? And yeah. if you're like renewing for another year and you're like, can I use this? You can. I don't know if you really can, but I just <laughs> felt right. I that felt in the moment. Good, you can. Yeah, that, that was good. like a preview that voice was, right yeah, there. It was amazing. Thank you. No, you totally can. Uh, and Leader Tracks, who is, uh, we love them, and we're going to yeah. be with them in Granger, Indiana. Yeah, Student, student Leadership, student leadership conference. conference. Doug right Franklin and morning. his crew always doing amazing, amazing things. Can you still and, register for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You want to bring, cool. bring some kids? No, but I actually have somebody in the neighborhood who was asking about it. And I was like, oh, gosh, it's like the best thing to take yeah. your students to. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, Thanks, they're Katie. They're in like northern Indiana. Yeah. Perfect. No, we would love to have yeah, some more people. Still time. And uh, uh, our goal this year, Josh and I, our, our goal, because we took marketing on ourselves. And yeah. our goal was to have it sold out. And we didn't We yeah. didn't meet our we didn't goal. Quite, we didn't quite. just a little short. Yeah, we don't really. It's okay. You guys do. are doing a great job. Well, thanks. thanks. Um, and well, then Give Central. Still out on that. But all right. GiveCentral.org <laughs> job, is one of our other sponsors. Right, Josh? GiveCentral.org. <laughs> yes, we love GiveCentral.org. If you're looking for a giving online platform, check out GiveCentral.org. For your church. Yeah. And if church you just ministry, know right? Fadi and you want to support him. Yeah. Give Central. Give Central. Org. That's GiveCentral.org. <laughs> and finally, um, Bethel University is so gracious to us and are hosting us at uh, Student Leadership, and we have made them a sponsor for, I don't know, the first half of the year until we yeah. decide not to. I think it's probably time. It's probably the last one. No. It's a good run, Bethel. <laughs> Love you. Oh, 
No, we have an official 38 page contract with them. We probably have to honor that. 38? So. I'm kidding. Just, we don't. Oh, holy It's no. like a handshake. Nothing official around here. Yeah, DYM, we're like, nah, I think that's it. what makes it special. That, it's, that we don't have any contracts? Yeah, that it, there's nothing <laughs> official. All right, questions for Katie. Let's do it. No, um, stop. This is, this is from Mark, Mark Shoemaker. He says, um, I just love the name Shoemaker. I don't know. I had bits going on in my mind about, like, what's your dad do? He's a shoemaker. I'm going to hmm. call my grandchildren. <laughs> I, I just said bits. It wasn't, was it yeah, it wasn't fully formed. But what, if, <laughs> but what if your last name was your profession? It wasn't fully formed. I like it. Yeah. I like it. You were just kicking around the idea. Just kicking around the idea. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Here we do. go. Yeah, Mark well, Shoemaker. The soul of it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna address this to uh, Katie, youth pastor. Um, uh, my pastor church Martha. is instituted a sabbatical for each pastor every five years. Can't relate. Oh, Keep going. It's a <laughs> two month <laughs> paid break from all ministry oh, responsibilities. My life is so hard. What's the question? <laughs> Mine is coming up next year, and I'm already starting to plan. I was wondering the following. Awesome. What would you recommend as to how to spend the time? How would you rest? How would you refresh? And what might you invest time into? That's a great, what a then, question. Then, second oh. question, how would you handle student interaction in that time? It's going to be really tough for me to take a break as a whole, and the hardest part uh, will be the lack of time in students' life that I've invested so much into. How do I do uh, what the sabbatical is supposed to do mm -hmm. while not stepping out of their lives? Two months feels like a long time. Mm. Could you set like a macro on your phone that whenever you got a text from a student, it would just send back, good luck with that? <laughs> you know what? Hey, I'm I really got with some dark, dark. Good luck with that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got some questions about my face. Oh, or good like luck an out of office on your text. Wouldn't that so be that, great? Like, when you're on vacation, it just sends up like, hey, text you when I get back from vacation. Yeah. Like, oh my Sorry, I'm I'll not. Be back in I June. need that technology. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's going to be coming out soon? It's got to be. Yeah, somebody's got to like come an, up with an that. An automatic response to a text. Yeah, yes, I know. Please. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Come on, Apple. Come on, Get your stuff Yeah, Josh's would go like this. I don't make phone calls so don't leave a message <laughs> and I don't return texts so I and now, I, and now you're getting sometimes an, auto, you an automatic response you know text. I'm just not a slave to other people or their right. technology I, I just live my life so in a different way sabbatical would be no problem for you sabbatical is my life every day I'm like yeah. I'm not going to be tethered to the man no. <laughs> or the no. woman I want to be gender specific you know, yes. come on. I no. know yeah no so I, I'll text you later but All right. what you asked about but what do you do? What do you do in this scenario? Sorry, I'll never, text sorry, you never, later. I never replied to Doug, and he's kind of just guilty me quietly behind no, the scenes. No, Doug, have you ever taken a sabbatical like that? I never got a sabbatical uh, until uh, I resigned. That's right. When I resigned, okay. Okay. when I resigned from Saddleback, you gave yourself your own. No, he, Rick, didn't accept my resignation and said, said you need to think and pray about it more. And he said, why don't you take a sabbatical? And I said, well, we don't do sabbaticals here and he said we do now you're the first <laughs> that's right and so i well, got a, awesome. i got a three month sabbatical to kind of think and pray about my decision job hunt yeah <laughs> <laughs> and during that time we started dym there no, you go uh, the rest is history no that's not true no but, but so i did but i was well intending... it's definitely not like this one no no yeah. no no yeah. no so i i had one but it wasn't an official like okay every sure. seven years or that type of thing okay. but i think two months is not two months because it's going to go by really so quick mm -hmm. i think i would teach on before i left i'd probably do a two or three week series on margin or busyness because busyness used to be 10 years ago was an adult series right. and it's not an adult series anymore mm -hmm. you know it's kids need to understand that mm -hmm. re related to choices and pace and so i would probably teach on that and why we keep ourselves healthy and fresh and as a result of that here's what's going to happen for two months um, i'm not going to be on campus i'm yeah. not going to be um, returning texts i'm actually going to shut my phone down and get a little burner phone for whatever i mean just That's you know uh, for crazy. for just my family and I'm really going to try to disengage, but it doesn't mean that I don't love you. It means I'm going to come back healthier and more excited. Yeah, I want to be I'm, here years from now. I'm going to study yeah. and learn. But I think part of a sabbatical is getting away. Mm -hmm. So even Absolutely. like when, you know, on a weekend when I'm not traveling, I don't even like to be at home. Like Kathy will say, what do you want to do? Like, let's go to the beach or let's go dry. Because when I'm at home, I start thinking of chores that I have to do. Yep. 
Honey do list, work pro whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever. I gotta clean my office or I gotta go work in the shed or whatever. whatever. Yeah. I don't even have a shed. I had a shed growing up. Oh, okay, so. all right. All right. I think that's the last the time shed, I worked Ma. in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> gotta go fix the mower. Or I mean talk to the gardener. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See if the gardener wants a sabbatical. Uh, <laughs> So, I think a, a list of books that maybe you haven't gotten around to would be great. Or talk to a few ministry friends and say, mm -hmm. what are three or four books off yeah. the grid? Like not the kind of classic, but what are some ones that maybe even cross discipline? Uh, maybe visit a church or two, like uh, at Saddleback. Oftentimes someone would roll through and they're on, we're on sabbatical and we just wanted to come see some other youth groups. And that was a really, really fun experience. And maybe you see if there's a... You know, something fun that you just haven't gotten to do as a family that you just can never find time for. What a gift this is right mm -hmm. here. I'll throw out one other idea and let you guys jump in too. But I would do something that's really out of your comfort zone. So something I've always wanted to do that I never have done is go on like a silent retreat where you don't talk mm. for a couple of days and you're supposed to just listen. That sounds so ridiculous to me and so counter my life that I would like to try it. So I don't think I would just one day pick up the phone and register for something like that. I think it would take a sabbatical for me to really do something. Mm -hmm. I think it would take a moral failure for you to do that. <laughs> I, don't think, wow. I don't think you'd ever do that. I'm not sure. I don't Give me a sabbatical you. and I'll no. see. I don't think you'd ever do but that. But something really out of your <laughs> out of your comfort zone would be awesome. Like explore a place that you haven't been. Yeah. How about that? Is that is that better now that I just get mocked for my ideas? No, I think no, it's I just quietly been my secret dream, and now no, I think it it's brilliant. Thank no, you. I think I think no. you were you were trying to help our shoemaker friend, but you would never go on a two day silent retreat. You don't think I can be quiet for the rest of the show? No, I not a chance. <laughs> not even a little bit. No, the show's over in thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, turn it off. Turn it off. All right, what would you guys add? What would you add? Since my answers are terrible, you just broke your, your silence. Your answers not terrible. It's great. <laughs> Are you okay? It didn't last five seconds. Josh just spit on me. I did, sorry. Um, I, Jared I, Coke Zero. I don't think two months is that long of a time, so I wouldn't stress too much about the student piece. I mean, honestly, m most students on average are only coming to church like twice a month. So, you know, like I, I think have someone for peace of mind, maybe like recording things for you so that you can follow up on things maybe when you get back. Yeah. But I think like Doug said, setting up students and letting them know, I, I, I don't think... You know, you're not going to stop having relationships with kids because you pop out for eight weeks. It's right. not it's not right. that long of a time. And in the long run, you know, the health when you come back will be awesome. But I like the idea of doing things that maybe you're just learning in completely different settings than the church. You know, so is there like an organization, you know, like going to Disney and just looking at the way that they engage all five senses or, you know, going to like cool. A, a cool, you know, organization or a factory or something and, and touring and asking questions and things I don't know like I think going to have experiences and adventures that just reignite passion and things like that could be super fun yeah even around here there's a factory tour of Oakley to make the sunglasses sure, that'd be awesome just a different Blizzard makes video games down the street Taco Bell global headquarters like just even just go hang out yeah. see those are on my list Yes. I would do that. I, I, love think it. I can cool. see you doing that, just not being quiet. <laughs> uh, Jason, let me ask you this, because 95% of the people listening are not going to be on a sabbatical. Right. What, what would be some of the principles that you've heard us say, putting you on the spot, Okay. we can all chime in on this, but yeah. what are some of the principles you've heard us say that you would say, hey, that, that would also apply to any other youth worker as well? You mean for a sabbatical? Yeah, that ninety-five percent of us aren't going to have a sabbatical. Right. So, what is it about the sabbatical that we could engage in our lives now? Well, I think um, I was going to say that I think a sabbatical. The most important thing would be to focus on your four most important relationships, which is Jesus, um, your wife or husband, Spouse. your children, and yourself. And so, taking time to like intentionally set aside and do that. I mean, that it's relax in it rest in it that's the idea of a sabbath so i mean uh, i love what you said the idea of of setting up the people to know i'm going to teach you on this and now i'm going to model it i'm going to show you and and you said didn't you chime in you said uh you know so that i want to last long a long time here right. i don't right. want to just last till next year so i think that's great to model it and i think it's great to really intentionally say you know don't don't fill up your sabbatical with scrolling through Facebook and Instagram all day. Don't fill up your sabbatical with just, you know, 
uh, working on some project at the house, it should be like, yeah, some travel, some rest, some naps. It should be some reading. It should be some time where you just sit quietly with God. I mean, I, I, I love it. Joking so aside. Just even taking those five things that you just said. Yeah. Rest, travel, sit quiet with God, the relationships a little bit. We should be doing that every week anyway. We should. In some form. Right. Right. You know, Translate not, the sabbatical into principles. Yeah. But it's, go, it's just like Sabbath. You should be doing be still and know that he's God every day. Yeah. But when you actually have a Sabbath to shut things down and to say like, okay, God, I'm intentional about this. I mean, it goes to every principle, right? Fasting. You, no. you should be somehow having, yeah, good Josh. What if you're fasting and you were quiet? That would suck so bad. <laughs> but not but the, uh, the principle of fasting you should be an everyday well. spiritual thing. But when you fast, it's an intentional thing where you actually set aside stuff and say, God, this is for you. So a sabbatical should be setting it aside and saying, God, I'm going to intentionally date my wife in a different way than I ever have before, or I'm intentionally going to spend time with my four kids like I normally don't, and I'm going to travel here and go here. Yeah. 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 So be intentional about the sabbatical for the mm -hmm. 95% of us that aren't going to have a sabbatical. Right. What I've never those, had one yet. <laughs> what are those things that we need to be intentional about on a, on a regular yeah, basis good. that would be good for our heart and our relationships? Yeah. So, um, this is cool. this is uh, B. Hi there, Katie, Doug, Josh, and Jason. My name is B. I'm a youth pastor from a small suburb of 6,500 people right outside of OKC. I'm a DYM Gold member. I've been following the podcast for the last two years and really enjoy having lunch with you all as I have tried catching up on the latest podcast, which I have. Not going to lie, kind of disappointing since I now have to wait until you post the next show. Oh, wow. It is somewhat like catching up with a Netflix show, only to find out they have another season in four months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that. Yeah. We, uh, here's what we it's did. A lot like that. We, <laughs> we launched a podcast <laughs> network and we got everybody else up, and then we've been inconsistent. I on know. Our, I know. The, our, we have so many new shows every single week, probably three, four, even five shows a week are going up right now. Our show every other or not even that much. Yeah, we but we're back right now. Yeah, You're listening here. to one right now. Yeah, and we're back. We're back. And is we're it back. B? B like the letter B or B E A or B E E? B, but I don't know if this person wants his or her name oh, 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 yeah. said. Okay. My real reason for writing this: I'm going to be at my church of 250 people going on three years. Awesome. We started with about 35, 40 kids on Wednesday nights, and are currently hitting around 110 to 120. What? I came in with six or seven strong volunteers who who ran the ministry while they were looking for a full-time person, me. And now we have 25-plus who leaders who serve alongside of me each week. I owe a lot of this to you all and how much I've learned listening and watching your show. The problem I'm running wow. to is this. The congregation I'm serving is not fully behind our pastor and his preaching or leadership in our church. Our eldership has asked him and given a plan for him for how to do better and and how they want things done and nothing has changed my biggest problem is that the congregation now comes to me wanting changes new preaching and leadership i'm in my late 20s and not really understanding how i should react the elders have asked my pastor to let me preach a series or two each year on sunday and i've gained 100 plus more people in attendance each week than he does when i preach he sees this and has since started pulling me off the speaking rotation and tells me I'm not needed at leadership meetings as well. While in those, he lies about what I do in ministry to the elders, Shoot. which in turn I must address with them and him after. I can't trust him and my desire to see this church flourish like I know it can, but what do I do about my pastor? What should I do when I have families tell me they would rather come to youth group than Sunday mornings because they learn more? What do I do when mm. people say they're leaving because I'm not the pastor? I'm not tooting my own horn or wanting the praise. I am simply at my the last end of my rope here and know that if I leave and take another offer, our church that I love so dearly may not make it. Hmm. Please leave the town and the name of my church out if you answer. Well, fair enough. Yeah. So what I hear is that this pastor might be on his way out. Did I hear that at the top a little bit? They're like the elders are like confronting this. Yeah, guy it sounds like he's on a he's on some type of redemptive type of work plan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, I would I would encourage B to wait. Brent, Brandon, Brad, 
Yeah. Belinda. I, Belinda. B. Probably. probably not. Um, I would encourage them to wait it out because I really think that, like, it sounds like he has such an intense love for this church, for these people, yeah. for the congregation where God has him. God's using him clearly. God's elevating him. And I would say trust the Lord with this because there's no way that even this man, this pastor, whoever it is, is can stop what God wants to do with this youth worker. There's no way. Yeah. Because even if, like he could set him back a year, he could set him back a few months, he could set him back out of the preaching rotation, but be faithful, be humble, you know, go well, back he to the could fire him. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the senior pastor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see there's no way he could set him back and I'm just saying there is a way. To <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Uh, got you there. Yeah, but I've been at my my little short silent retreat thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been fasting since the show started. I've got a really great. spiritual answer, too. That's yeah. great. What if you rented a space in the same town and oh started gosh. a rival church, took as many people as you could, oh and said, we're going to show them? What do you think? Say you're joking right I'm now. joking. No, I'm thinking Josh needs say, a sabbatical. Say you're joking. All so jokes contain the truth. truth. <laughs> quietly, quietly, youth workers, us, we, maybe I'm alone in this, sometimes think that way. We go to the dark place like, I could do a better job than the senior pastor. The senior pastor is clueless. They're out of touch. I can't believe, if I was running this thing, I would be, so I would just say, obviously making light of this, be really careful. Mm. Your pinch hitting sermons are great attendance in the church i don't know if it's directly connected to you maybe it is maybe it is. just be really careful of any any seed of discord arrogance douchebaggery whatever hmm. don't hmm. be that guy okay. or gal yeah. yeah yeah i don't think you ever win by putting your pastor down and i'm not he doesn't give any indication or she doesn't give any indication that he or she is but when people complain about the senior pastor preaching i think that's when you defend him yeah you say well you don't know how difficult it is to do it week after week and yeah people like me when i preach but i only preach three times a year and i've got a lot of time in between and i'm just basically redoing a youth message that i've already done right. for junior high and, and high school trust the elders trust the process god loves this church more than any of us yeah i'm not going anywhere i'm happy to be yeah. here and serve if you'd like I to come be involved in the youth ministry great just but, don't pit the the people against the pastor don't mm -hmm. encourage it just guard your own heart in this. Yeah, but don't hide either. So if you're being lied about in those meetings where you're, Agreed. you know, you Agreed. need to say, you know, Pastor, I heard this came back to me, and I don't, I don't think this reflects the truth. Can you tell me what you were, yeah, you were thinking? That's good. I like what you said about preaching too. I, do you know, I just had a week ago for the first time preaching fatigue. And I've never had it what before. Is it? What home. is preaching? Well, fatigue? just when you're like, I, I'm exhausted. I've been doing this every week in a row. Like I went, I normally always try and get someone else in the pulpit once a month. Yeah. Always. That's like my minimum. And I went, I think, seven weeks in a row. And it was like, I'm, I need a week off. And I can't tell you how refreshed I was after a week. So it, it's funny because I would always think like that before. You yeah. know, a young up and coming preacher. I thought I was you know, God's gift to the congregation and, and, and my messages were people would tell me, Oh, when you speak, they're the best. And it's like, yeah, I speak twice a year up yeah. here mm. and you can put, and when it comes, you have a whole month to plan it and all this, <laughs> right. And you put all, all your best, best stories. Story. Yeah. All your best yeah. stories. And of course it's so, it's a lot easier to do that. So I love what you said. That's pointing back to encouragement and and uh, I actually talked to some people that go to your church and they were happy you took it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's an opportunity here to like to journal a little bit of leadership stuff too to go? Because I've learned a lot of things about who I don't want to be mm. from some poor leaders too. Yes. So there is an opportunity here. I know this sounds a little novel from the outside, but having lived through it, I would say write down some things that you say, I don't want to be this type of leader. Should I be in that position when so I'm running good. a team or running a church? Like, cause now you are like, mm -hmm. Jason, you're the guy that this person's complaining about, you know, the mm -hmm. church. So, but you're not that type of leader. And how did you get to that point? I would think there were some intentional moments along the way where you said, I'm not going to be like that guy or that guy. I did exactly that. There was, there was many lessons learned along the way that said, I, 
I said, I, I can't do that. And I have to catch myself because then you're on the other side of it later and you see these things come up and uh-huh. you want to just, you know, say, ah, you're a millennial. I'm not going to respect that or something. <laughs> but it's like, but it's not reality. Right. It's not, you can't do that. Well, I think to. you can do that same principle, even if you have good leaders exactly. that you're with. Yeah. Because there are times when good leaders are going to do something different than is natural to who you are. So Jim Burns, mm-hmm. who is my hero and was my youth pastor when I first worked with him, he used to, his default phrase was, well, how hard can that be? And I'm sure <laughs> I have picked that up over the years, but when I worked for him, like as an intern, I hated that. I'm like, I am never going to say, well, how hard can that be? Because it was so demeaning to me. Uh-huh. And I knew, you know, his heart wasn't, but it was like, oh, really? Like, well, I mean, he was questioning, like, can't be that difficult. All you got to do is go down there and pick it up or whatever. Right, right. How hard can that be? But <laughs> even that. though I thought he was a great leader and a great mentor sure. and pastor and coach, there were things that he did where I went, I'm going to do that different. Yeah. Um, well, and just remember, someone's going to make a list about you too yeah. someday. Yeah. So just know that there's someone who's taking notes on who to be and who not to be in the wake of your leadership too. Yeah. yeah. That sucks, but it's true. Good mm-hmm. lessons. Okay, uh, here's the deal. Katie, you're going to send us off with any bit yes. of wisdom. Mm. Yes. Um, I would like Boom, you to baby. wrap this up. I'd like yeah. you to summarize what you heard God say. Yep. Um, Ooh, we Katie. we are at a... a word? We're, because we are <laughs> actually recording... <laughs> prophesy the time of Jesus' yeah. return. We are recording another podcast right after this. Yeah. I have to go to the bathroom, and I'm going right. to run. Okay. But... Jason has to get to band rehearsal. I know, and so he's, we have a, to, he's a big deal. We have to we have to close this down. He's got to shut down. Some it's thirty six minutes private school right parents. now, and so we said two thirty five minute shows. So we're kind of okay. 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 Here it is. Here it is. I'm just doing a wrap up thought. Yeah, you're no, doing you a just, wrap up. Yeah, put a little button on the show. Okay, I would just say right, as a wrap up thought, just <laughs> <laughs> just be faithful. Just be faithful mm. to what God has called you to do and who he has called you to be. And be faithful, and everything else can flow out of that. That's good. That's it. That's good. And then go start a rival church. That's what I no. heard. No. <laughs> no. So we're going to be faithful to record more shows, right? We are. We, we are. are. And we take are. a two-day silence it's sabbatical. We're picking dates. Yeah. Yep. Let's be we're honest. We're picking dates. Faithful. We're stacking hands. That was good. We love this. We, we love each Katie. other. Yeah. We love two-day silence sabbaticals fasting and silence yeah story of my life (laughs) story (laughs) okay that's the josh griffin story (laughs) all right thanks to orange see you wrap it up Uh, this was 334